Greetings, y'all, and welcome to episode 66 of Feedy's Awesome Guest Panel. And tonight we have not only a veteran voice actress, but one of the most charismatic one as well. My guest at this time is Ms. Nancy Van Eiderstein. Nancy, how are you today? <laughs> Hi, I'm great. It's so nice to be here with you. I've watched some of your episodes and I really enjoy them. You're doing a lot of fun stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. It's such a pleasure to have you on here. Thank I you. And uh, I absolutely loved your work on Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. And uh, be before we get into uh, the Lost Galaxy questions, because I got a couple, um, first question I have, and this is your typical cliche question, and that is, how did you get your first start into acting? Take me there. Well, the very, very first start would have been uh, just dancing around the living room for my siblings and my parents and watching the looks on their faces like, oh God, is this going to continue? Is this going to be her life? And uh, yeah, it was. So yeah, I've always wanted to do it. I, I studied all through college and came right to LA as soon as I graduated. So I've been here a while doing it. Congrats. Yeah. And uh, yeah. especially like how you how you came up like uh, like with the like your inspiration is just beautiful though like like oh it just involved me like uh, it's just a great uh, way to get started to voice acting. Yes, yeah, and it's interesting. I actually got my SAG card. Well, I got my SAG card playing a pair of pajamas and a telephone in um, a show that dubbed over old movies, and it was someone from an improv class who called me in to audition and I did it and I started to realize wow voices are fun you know not to mention oh gosh people get money for doing this not just you know not just on camera stuff so I don't think initially I thought that voice would be a big part of my career but it has turned out to be really equal parts on camera and voice and I couldn't be happier. I love it. I love them both. That's beautiful. And, yeah. And if you, like I said in the, the top of our program, you're a veteran uh, actress and voice actress. Um, do you have any uh, pre-acting or voice acting uh, preparation or warm-ups that you do or would recommend to any actor or, or actress? I think the most important thing is the voice and um, breathe. You know, do a lot of breathing. If you're driving to a set and you've got a ways, sing gently, don't push it, uh, but get the voice warmed up for either of those. Take a bunch of deep breaths, close your eyes if you possi possibly can on set, in the booth, in the waiting room, whatever you can. And remember that all the preparation you've done for on camera, everything could change the minute you get on set. And for voice, you know, you you very often don't see the script in advance. If you're on a series, yeah, you're gonna know what you're doing that day. But but very often, if you're going in for a one-off, um, you may have no idea really what the script is even about. So um, flexibility is really important there, and just just knowing that it's a it's a it's play. You know, you're playing. You're getting paid to play. So remember that. You know? <laughs> I, I have to ask you, as, out of all the project, projects you've done, um, was there ever a time where a director or producer gave you like layway where you can like improvise or you can come up with stuff like, like, imp like improvise or ad lib to the scripts that you are in the role that you're part of? Well, uh, actually, yeah. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I did a, an indie film called Velvet Crush. And I play a character very unlike myself, which I love. And frankly, that's a lot of what I do. I seem to be a character actress, and I love that. Um, and he allowed me to he allowed me to play with her a little bit. He we mostly kept to the dialogue, but uh, the movements and some of the some of the length of time it took us to do some of the lines i think he had something in mind we went in a different direction and he loved it and we won a bunch of awards so <laughs> yeah. I, I guess it was a it was a good thing <laughs> yeah, there's, nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with winning awards right i i i got my right here 
here. It's so pretty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did not expect that. It was, you know, it was a risk and someone I'd never worked with before. Uh, so when he gave me just a little bit of, of freedom there, I did take advantage of it, but in a way that I think honored exactly what he was trying to do, which is this very, very dark comedy. And uh, yeah, so that was that was a big surprise. Yeah, that is a big surprise. And yeah. I definitely got to ask you this too, as this is another like as a character, a character actress and an actress in general, though, like I want to get your thoughts on this because I asked Lorna Scott uh, this question on the previous episode. And now I want to get your opinion on this. Mm. Um, Say that there is a scenario that you're doing a project with and you have to work one on one with another uh, actor or actress. And the scene requires where it requires you like like the both your character and the other actor's characters get into like a heated argument. That's the mm -hmm. scenario. And mm -hmm. then that actor goes up to you and say, hey, Nancy, um, I had an idea that we can like to help bring realism to this, uh, this scene, like to make people believe that this is real, though. And then and then this actor goes on to talk about like to to try to unlock raw emotions to that way to uh. make it on, like because one thing I always believe to to make good storytelling is raw motion. I believe raw motion tells like a great story. And, mm. and that's why, you know, and we're going to talk about Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, but that's why I absolutely loved your role in Power Rangers Lost Galaxy because I felt Impostra told a story with her menacing, you know, intimidation and like how, and, like even the story where she tries to steal the lights of Orion. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, in that scenario, what do you tell this actor that said um, and, and that he wants you like we should try to see and he suggested and he just recommended like like he wanted you to like you know lay into this like lay into like mm -hmm. him during the scene like like pretend like it's a mother yelling at their son like that they did something very disciplinary how do you mm -hmm. react to that like to that uh suggestion well you know it's funny i did a film um right around the time of of power rangers actually called the seller and it was another dark comedy and which I play a very unpleasant wife and mother. And this family is in a real pickle in this film. Um, and the director, I remember it wasn't the other actor. It was more the director who said, look, I know you're nice in real life, but you're not nice at all in this. So, you know, he, he was sort of, baiting me and then I think he may have said something to the man playing my husband because he started saying sort of unpleasant things and I thought oh I see what's going on here and I just went with it because I think one of the cool things about um being on set and and having something very unexpected happen is that you get to really look at the way for example, I remember my husband in the movie sort of twisted his face a certain way. And I thought, well, that's really unpleasant. I don't like that, you know? And it gave me more fuel to kind of come at him because it isn't my nature, you know? I don't yell at people. And in particular, she puts him down. She is very demeaning. And it was very interesting. I started to use physically what he was giving me vocally, what he was giving me um, to kind of fire back at him. And the director had this little grin, like, ah, you know, <laughs> my plan, my plan worked. And I never said anything, but I still think to this day that he planted a seed in that actor's mind saying, mess with her, you know, mess with her beyond the lines, mess with her. So <laughs> that was the, that was the motivation to, to, to fuel you. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I won't lie though, because like I totally agree with that philosophy. Like, if we did a, if I was an a, an actor, uh, Nancy, and we did a scene together, I would tell you like if there was a scene that requires like like me to cry though, I and I would tell you, Nancy, mm. you gotta lay. Like, I know this is gonna sound weird, but you gotta lay into me because there's yeah. no way I could fake a cry like that. Because if I do, it's gonna. Yeah. Do you want the audience to laugh or do you want them to be scared? Mm-hmm. So I would I would I would tell like any actor actress like if who I work with I was like please if you need me to do a certain thing whether it's you know cry laugh lay do it I, you're not gonna offend me. You know it's a very interesting 
and sometimes delicate process because you don't always know what that other actor is has in their mind and um, to begin with. Um, some actors are very sort of method and they've got a lot going on. Some people I'm more inclined to have thought about it, done scene study, figured out vocally what my character might do, but also shown up on set being prepared to be very spontaneous. So it's a fine line to know where and how far to push another actor and, and, and how much to really get in there. And you think, wow, this feels very real, which can be frightening. It can be frightening when, particularly when it's, like you say, a very high drama, if it's um, a very either scary or, or uh, horrifying things are happening, or very sad things are happening. It's, it's, it's actually very tiring. I will say that as an actor, when I've had to play parts where, particularly where I cry, and you wind up doing all the takes you do for all the different angles, you're tired that night. <laughs> you're really tired. Yeah. Uh, what I would say to you though, before, like if we did a scene and I was and, like, I was like, we were in a shouting contest, I would tell you in advance though, like, cause I, I'm, yeah. very, I'm very nervous because I don't want anybody to be mad at me, like if I'm doing something. So I would tell you like in advance, so that way, you know, like, listen, uh, Nancy, right. this, this scene, I'm going to be like in this scene, I'm going to probably get loud. I'm probably going to get sweaty and I'm probably going to turn red. But I just want you to know now that I, like, this is my character saying this, and it's not me. Off screen, I respect right. you so much. Like, I, yeah. I don't want you to think the other way, like, that yeah. I'm actually screaming at you. Yeah. Yeah, I had in this, in that film, again, I, um, I had to be very mean to my daughter. And I remember speaking with her ahead of time and saying, I'm going to have to play a very mean person with you right now. And I just want you to know that, I'm just acting and, and is there anything I can do to make you more comfortable uh, about that? And her mom was there too. And we had a nice talk and um, I'm glad we had that conversation, particularly with someone younger, you know, she was a child and I had to be really mean to her and I, it was hard. It was hard to do, you know, and she's so sweet again, very nice person. You know? <laughs> It breaks your heart when you have to be be harsh to like someone very very nice, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why I would. It, it would break my heart totally if I had to do like that with people I respect and love. Like if I had yeah. to like, scream, like I, I would. I would be really upset with myself if I had to scream that loud if we had a scene together, uh, Nancy. Yeah. Uh, the, ne <laughs> the next question I had. You've done a lot of a. Uh, you've done. Uh, a lot of uh, live action work and I want to get your time and memories of shooting LA law. Oh, wow. That was a, that was a small part. Um, it was, it was funny. What I remember most about it, uh, believe it or not, was the audition um, with those, what they call co-star roles where you're just helping to push the plot along because you know, they, they need something to be said in order for the attorneys to go at each other. So I remember walking into the casting office and she gave me my few lines to say and she read with me and she said, okay, we're going to do this four different ways. And we did it four different ways with me being very intimidated and being uh, a showboater and being all these things. And after, <laughs> after I finished, she goes, Oh, no one's actually ever done this four different ways. Thank you. <laughs> and I said, I think it's because I do a lot of improv. And so once again, you don't know what's coming at you. The audience is going to right in the middle of a, you're doing a love scene and the audience shouts out. Now you're angry. Now you're scared. Now you see a ghost, whatever. So you have to run with it. And um, I, I really remember that audition and feeling really sort of, sort of proud on the way home. And actually they, they cast me immediately. They usually, you wait. And I knew by the time I got to the car that they had cast me. So that was, that was fun. But yeah, it was cool being on set uh, with what at the time was a big show and, you know, meeting people that you watched every week and, oh, hello, Mr. Formerly Corey Thornson, you know, and it was, it was fun. It was a fun, very nice people. Very nice. 
Yeah, and, and you, it's not it's a great feeling to just walk in saying, "Yeah, I got this. I know I'm yeah. gonna get this." Yeah, and then you yeah. book, and then you got it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that was fun. Awesome. Yeah. And um, now the next question I have for you now, this, I access to every guest star I have on my show, and and this is the nerd part of me asking this question. But when I'm not on a military strict diet, I'm usually a foodie. And this is going to lead to my next question is you worked <laughs> on so many projects, which probably had the best catering scenes in town, which, which, uh, production that you worked on had the best catering company mm. and, and, and also your favorite meal from that catering. That's a good question. Um, best meal. Well, I'm a little tricky cause I'm a vegan. So... I mostly inhabit the salad area. <laughs> um, you know, I'm trying to think. I, I ironically, I've done most, most of the television stuff has wound up being uh, Fox. And I, I say ironic because I've also had a dual career. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's a triple career as a copywriter, which has mostly revolved around Fox, too. Um, but I will say that Fox in general, um, Fox Television, invites you into their commissary for the most spectacular meals. So I don't remember which project in particular, but I know that anytime, anytime I've had to go over there, I've eaten really well. And even as a vegan, gotten really full. So, so thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, after this interview, would you be able to give me, uh, like, recommend some uh, vegan recipes? Because I'm, I'm willing to learn new uh, stuff. Uh, when I started cooking last year with my mom, so I, I'm always learn, uh, learning new uh, recipes. I would be happy to. As a matter of fact, I, believe it or not, wrote a vegan cookbook that is available digital, digitally only on Amazon at this point. And I've just done a revision of it because I realized um, I wanted to add a few more things to it. And I could, I could actually even sneak you that PDF, if you would like, because I, I haven't, I haven't um, updated it on Amazon yet. And the reason I wrote it, incidentally, is I wasn't a vegan, but I have a very close friend who is, and I was having, I love to entertain, and I was having her come to my house fairly often, and I realized that I wanted to make her comfortable. So I kind of taught myself how to make a lot of vegan dishes, and I thought, this is really fun. I want to share this. So, um, so I'd be happy to. Oh, I'll slip it. you that PDF. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, it's and, comfort and, food, and I and I I'm sorry to interrupt, but it um, but I I wanted it to be that because one of the things people, if they are trying a more plant based diet. One of the things they worry about is that they're going to be hungry or that they're going to just be living on kale. And I wanted, I wanted people to know, no, you can have all your favorite, you know, mac and cheese and, and lasagna and all the stuff you grew up with thinking was bad for you in a way that's a lot healthier and plant-based. So it's all really fun food, pretty easy to make too. So, yeah. I can't wait to see those recipes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I have to ask you too, like, because I watched this uh, incredible video. Um, so, since uh, as a character actress, um, there was a video online where a family, a little girl and her family, went to Disney World and handed out gifts to all the Disney uh, Disney actors that portrayed characters, uh, gifts, including the villains. If you were portrayed, if you were portraying a villain and you were told not to break character, like, because I think in Disney World, you're not allowed to break character. How do you react when at you, Nancy, playing a villain character as handed a gift from a little girl? <laughs> wow. Well, um, that hasn't happened, but what a brave little girl. Um, I think I would probably have to give her a snarl you know, in character and, and then, and then take the gift and, and maybe wink at her like, you know what, I, I appreciate this, but I have to appreciate it in a mean way. So <laughs> it's like, I want to say, it's, I wanna say <laughs> thank you, but how do I do that without breaking character? Yeah. So let me, let's do the wink. <laughs> yeah. I think you do a wink and a snarl because a snarl can be funny. And I, speaking of 
imposter, there's a real camp thing going on with her. And uh, I don't know if it was just me or if they, if they wanted many of those characters to be camp because there definitely is a camp quality to that. Yes. To that series oh yeah and i in fact i remember driving home one day from the studio thinking you know there was one line in there where i felt i sounded a lot like joan rivers i didn't do it on, I didn't do it on purpose but i thought that's exactly how joan rivers would say that line so i think there's almost a fine line between villainy is vil villainy and uh and comedy and if you think about it a lot of horror films there's a kind of a there's a comic thread in in most horror too so yeah yeah uh, uh, you're, that's you're, a fun question <laughs> oh it is uh, and i i gotta say too like you're definitely a great example of like a, a fun a fun villain that's like yeah they're they're evil but they're also like funny too at the same time uh, like there's another actor. Oh God, rest his soul. Like he was one of my favorites too. That was like this too, and that was the late great Phil Hartman. He could play the most seedy villain, but at the same time play a very comedic villain, and that's yeah. and that's very cool. Because I always said this, and I said this on an episode I had with Amy Roll and Kate Sheldon and uh, Katrina Brown. I said uh, that there was like there is nothing more intimidating that not only a villain that can physically annihilate you, but someone that can easily destroy you in wit as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting because all three of those women, if you watch their work, it really shows how much fun they're having. You know, you can tell that, and, and, and I feel it too when you do that evil laugh or something afterwards, you know that when the, then the microphone goes off or the camera goes off, they're just laughing, you know, because it's just so much fun. And it really shows in their work. And I think it adds a dimension to the characters that's a lot of fun, you it's know, especially a show like that where kids and adults are both watching, you know, and the adults get that. They do. They, they, they get the, yeah. the meta references while they, I mean, and then the kids pick up on that eventually. Yes. Yeah. I do want to get your thoughts, of course, on the 2011 animated movie, Little Big Panda as Mama Chu. I have to say my favorite voiceover gig so far. Um, you know, you're working, you're doing it, you're being honest, you leave the studio, you forget about it, and then you see it. And the first time I saw it, I watched it with a friend, actually. And I was moved to tears. I said, this is the sweetest, most heart-filled story. It's gentle, too. It's, a, um, it's appropriate for younger kids. And I kind of lean towards that. I mean, I love that. I love Scaring people is fun, but being a soothing influence for little kids is a lot of fun too. And I just loved playing Mama Chu. I auditioned, I auditioned for the tiger, the fierce tiger character. I auditioned for another kind of obnoxious character. And when I got Mama Chu, I thought, oh, good. <laughs> I, I love her. I love that movie. I love that movie so much. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's so it's awesome to see like you going from like, um, <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna discuss the power uh, right now because I want to do a compare yeah. I want to do a, a compare between Imposter and Mama Chu, um, <laughs> and that was and that was memories of course working working on uh, Power Rangers Lost Galaxy as Imposter. Yeah, um, it was fun, you know. Um. The people working on that show, I think, first of all, were grateful to have anything steady. Now, she isn't in that much of it. it was, it's a smaller role, but it was really fun showing up when you knew people were kind of paying a lot of bills with that show. And so right there, you've got a fairly relaxed environment. You've got people who aren't panicking over okay, when I leave the studio today, how will I pay next month's rent? So, so there was that. Um, but it was also just a nice group of people. I always found the directors to be very nice. 
And again, you know, you might be leaving the booth and the next villain is going in after you and you're like, hi, how are you doing? You know, bagels are good, aren't they? And then as you're leaving, you're hearing that person, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lot of fun i'm i'm very grateful i didn't see it coming you know because i don't know monster and a kid shot i mean it just it, it was a surprise it was a fun surprise yeah um yeah and you you didn't get to work with amy roll right uh Trichina, the person i played Trichina? didn't work in person with her no um and and there again it's so much fun to watch you know the whole thing coming together because you're playing off each other and same with um you know scorpius destructo um uh, uh, uh treacheron treacheron yeah. oh i have another actually you just reminded me i have a another power rangers story if you want to hear it yes yes <laughs> um the famous lord zed played by robert axelrod who is no longer sadly oh, with us. God rest his soul. One of the nicest people I've ever met. And among the many things he did, he was a theater reviewer. And I remember um, he saw a play I was in and he gave us a very nice review. And I thought, wow, that's such a tender review. He really, really, he really took this in. He took this to heart. He was really paying attention to everything we did up there. And I remember meeting him at a party of theater people one time. And I had, and I overheard him saying something about Lord Zed. And I thought, wait a minute, that can't be the same Robert Axelrod. And I walked up to him and I, I said, you know, I, I ain't going to sound foolish here, but are you the same Robert Axelrod who does theater reviews and you're a Power Rangers monster? And he said, yeah, and he giggled. He loved being that villain so much. He loved being scary. He loved being intimidating. He loved doing work for kids. Um, and like me, kind of had this very diverse career that took him everywhere. All kinds of like totally unrelated aspects of the business um so um i'm glad i got to meet him and i got to thank him for not only his work but for being such an appreciator of theater you know oh he was wonderful i loved him uh, uh not only as lord zed but as finster too i loved his yes <laughs> yeah um, i gotta ask you too uh nancy did you get to work or uh, meet uh, barbara goodson who voiced uh, rita repulsa you know, I didn't work with her, but I've worked with her on other things. I can't name something right now, but I know that I've met her. Really lovely person. Oh, yeah. I had her on my yeah. show. Very cool. Oh, I want to see that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send one. you. I'm going to send you the link. I. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm catching up on your shows. You're you're starting to do so many. Um, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a great. I just congratulations go, thank you and like having you on like i can honestly say like to nancy if we ever work together if i was an actor i can honestly tell like with the chemistry we have right now and with the amount of charisma like charisma you have like i, I feel like we we'd work very well together if we did a, if we worked on a project together well thank you i and i hope we do and i love your energy um it's one of the things that makes your interviews so much fun is not only you have some cool people on but you you yourself have such a wonderful personality and it really comes through. You've got such, I know it's a cliche in Los Angeles <laughs> to say, but you have such great energy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And the, the, you know, I started the show two years ago. I mean, there were two reasons I started this. One, because I always wanted to interview the people that I watched growing up. That inspired me. And obviously you did. I, I'm doing an interview with you right now. And of course, like it's it's also my way of saying thank you for those memories like you gave oh, me sure. as a little boy. I've been a fan of your work, Nancy, since I was like that nine-year-old yeah. nine-year-old boy. And um I, I said this to Amy, I said this to Amy Roll, Katrina Brown, and, and majority of everyone I had on my show. And that and that is like even though you don't have the powers of an imposter, you do have one incredible gift, <laughs> and that is you can make a 32 year old fan and make him <laughs> feel like a, a eight or seven year old kid again 
That's excellent. That's excellent. At the end of the day, kind of feel like maybe that's what entertainment should do. <laughs> you know. And Nancy, you ever yeah. seen the show uh, Tiny Toons? Oh yes. Okay. You know, like how they had the Looney Tune characters be like the the, the mentors and like the Tiny Tunes are like the the students. If yes. if if there was an acting school where like you know, or or like a villain school where like if you were a mentor and I was a student, I'd be like. Oh, please give me Nancy as my mentor. Please, I'm not greedy. I'm, I'm not jealous. I'm not uh, greedy. I'll take, uh, can I just please have uh, Liz? Uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've, I've, um, I've done some teaching, coaching. I taught improv for a while and sketch. And um, honestly, I've just gotten pulled in so many directions. It's kept me from, from doing that a little bit more than I might have. I even, I got a degree in uh, education and I'm not really, not really using it. <laughs> oh, I, I have a bachelor's in uh, child education's uh, one to six. I know. And the, and the work you're doing with it is remarkable. And I hope you feel very satisfied with that. It's Thank you. Thank, thank you for doing it. Thank you for doing it. It's wonderful. It, it warms my heart. Yeah. I, I got to ask you too, Nancy, um, from, from a voice actress's perspective, how was Power Rangers shot? Like the shooting, the filming? Well, I was strictly in the booth. So I don't know. And this is kind of an ironic secret. I don't know if it's a secret or not. When I see my credit for that, it shows up as just voice. I don't know who's in that suit. Hmm. So I know she fell out of a tree. Oh, I was amazed. That looked like quite a drop. So uh, <laughs> hats off to that lady. If it was a lady, I don't know. We don't know. We don't I know. Don't, well, I think, it, yeah, it was a lady. But you can tell from the face, but I honestly don't know. I really don't. And if you think about it, it was a while before uh, a lot of us knew who played uh, C-3PO in Star Wars. So if you think about it, it's not the first time that we've kind of wondered, wait, who was, who was that? Yeah, who was that guy? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I do want to ask you this too, like, for the people uh, watching this, how did imposter sound like? Well, you know, I, I wish I could remember that audition. I don't. Um, because when I have a somewhat soft voice, although I play these, you know, villainous, you know, monster sounding people sometimes, but I don't remember them asking her to be particularly, you know, gruff or horse, or, um, you know, using the deeper register. Mm -hmm. I do a little bit with her, but not that much, you know? I mean, my voice is, I feel like if I were to have one adjective for my voice overall, it's the mom voice, you know? It's the more kind of soothing voice. So frankly, I was very pleasantly surprised when they cast me and I thought, oh, maybe they're gonna do all kinds of distortion to my voice. But they didn't. It was it was just me, and I think um, I didn't go terribly far to get her. It really was just in the dialogue. I mean, when someone you know says "ha ha, thank you for giving me," you know, blah, 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 you know, it affects your voice without the director saying anything. So maybe there's a little imposter in me. <laughs> Oh, you're making me feel like I'm a nine-year-old boy again. <laughs> I, went I went straight back to 1999. <laughs> and I, loved it. I, I love you. You made that comment to me. You scared me when I was nine. And I'm like, I don't think anyone's ever said that to me, but I want to use that quote somewhere. I love it. <laughs> And, and let me just say this, not just like, and it wasn't that type of scary, like, like a little kid going, ah, imposter. It was more on the lines, like, you scared me, like, when a person is so fearful that their heart is either stopped or they Ooh. either beat very fast. 
Wow. That's interesting. Like it was more like intimidation. Like like your character was very intimidating. You know, I think it's because she's so manipulative. And you know, that's her whole that's where she gets her joy, it seems to me. You know, she's not just she's not just content to mess with people's lives and take things from them. Mm -hmm. It seems to me she I at least half of the joy in that comes from the very act that she is messing up people's lives, you know? It's not that she's just getting what she wants, for example, the lights of Orion. It's that she gets to she gets to really mess with someone's head. Yeah. And I think that may be part of why she's so scary, you know? That, she, she, you could, know? she could shape shift. She's a shape yeah. shifter. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, though, like, not only does she get what she wants, but she also just does extra stuff as a bonus. Like, like she, it's not like she just wants to do crimes. She just wants uh, uh, wanted on uh, on uh, mindless, mindless destruction. Yeah, mindless destruction and to also remind the people who were her victims what she was accomplishing and how that made her happy. <laughs> so. oh, real, real nice lady. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, mem uh, memories of shooting Holiday Breakup as the Catwoman and working with Min uh, Mindy Sterling. Oh, so much fun. So much fun. Um, for a minute, I thought, wow, are these cats just going to steal the whole show? Um, but um, it, was, it was a very, um, again, it was a, a very upbeat uh, shoot. I came in late in the shoot, and actually, Mindy and I worked different days. Wow. Um, I was a little disappointed because I studied with her at the Groundlings, and have always thought of her as kind of a mentor. So I was really looking forward to um, to meeting her. And then when I got the call sheet and I looked at the days, I thought oh she just finished and i'm starting oh you know too bad but it was it was a, a very fun shoot working with animals um i didn't know what to expect i thought well what if they all start crying over my dialogue or clawing to get out or what you know what's going to happen and none of that happened it seemed like they loved the camera <laughs> There are a lot of shots of the cats going, you know, like, and I'm thinking, wow, no one directed that. <laughs> and for the record, you love cats too, right? I love cats and I rescue them. And uh, I have rescued a great many over the years. And they are the, they are the source of quite a lot of inspiration. So. Yeah. Uh, that, that's cool. When I had Michael Bell on the show, uh, or one of the guest uh, stars, one of them asked if I could pledge a donation for uh, cats for uh, California, and oh. I, I had no problem doing that. I was happy to Aww. donate. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know if it was Michael Bell or if it was Renee Jacobs. It was definitely one of those uh, voice actor or actress that did it. Mm. And Wow, that's I, nice. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, could, I do got to ask you, too, your memories of shooting the 1994 movie, The Cellar, and working with Mink, uh, Mink Stoll. Mink Stoll. Mink was a sweetheart. Um, she played my older sister in that film, and she was kind of already pretty well known. And Waters, so, right? yeah, yeah. So I was, I was a fan um, and didn't quite know what to expect once again, could not have been more congenial and welcoming and, um, uh, yeah, just a very nice lady. Very funny. Very funny. But the kind of person that when the camera's off, very respectful of everyone's space. And, you know, if you wanted to engage in conversation, she would, but otherwise just letting, we, we shot, as I recall, a lot of our scenes in a pretty hot on a pretty hot set and so we were all pretty much walking around going like this you know afterwards but yeah sweetheart yeah that that was a fun movie that was yeah that was a very i re-watched it recently and um it gets better with age some some projects do you look at it and you go wow 
he had some very interesting insights that 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 writer director and uh kind of forgot what a fascinating journey that that whole thing was yeah yeah Really nice. Uh, I, I loved her like in all the John Waters movies. I love I actually had her co-star uh Susan Lowe uh, from Desperate Living uh on the mm -hmm. show two years ago. She mm -hmm. Big Soul is just a, a classic, like a one of a kind yeah. gem. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. uh you play now you played so many roles, protagonist and antagonist. Which was your favorite? On oh camera? That's yes. a good question. Uh <laughs> I think I I think I would say um probably uh Alice the cat lady and holiday breakup because she has another scene besides the cats which was a very fun scene she has this very zen scene where she's giving advice about basically if you want to be happy the secret to to being happy is oh yeah just be happy and it just made me laugh so hard because especially in Los Angeles the land of self-help where her her grand advice is just just do it you know you want to be happy be happy get out of here you know um so I really loved I really loved playing her yeah that's awesome and yeah. Um, now, in an auto comment, an auto commentary uh, DVD for The Simpsons, Kurt Douglas, uh, the, the writers talked about how Kurt Douglas hated working with headphones because they hurt his ears during recording. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get your uh, opinion as a voice uh, actress. Uh, do you prefer recording with headphones or without headphones? You know, I've um, I've been doing some audiobooks at in my home studio slash closet. And <laughs> when I first started doing that, I was wearing the headphones and I thought, why am I doing this? I don't need this. And I've also noticed that on recent gigs, I have been using them less. I always, I always felt they were an absolute must, um, that you couldn't properly hear the direction you were getting or sound effects, anything you, that you needed to hear including your own voice without them that was what i was convinced and since i've been working mostly lately without them i'm thinking wow i never probably never really did need them i think it's personal preference um in the age of covid it's a lot more expensive to keep having actors use them because of the what they have to do between actors um, so I would suspect we're going to keep moving towards using them less and less, but that's just opinion. That's not really informed opinion because I'm not a studio. I don't know what, what they think on that, but I, I, I'm fine with or without pleasantly surprised at how little I feel I need them these days. That's fair. And, yeah. uh, I, I do have one last uh, question before we wrap up, uh, Nancy, uh, and that and this is going to segue into um, m m because my show is an open forum. Uh, this is the part of my show where like I allow my guest stars to talk about, promote, hype anything they want. Uh, the floor is yours, Nancy. You can talk about anything you like. Oh, well, I may have mentioned that I've had this other career doing copywriting for studios. Um, I have been told that a contract I've had with a certain rather large studio is coming to an end and they're unable to extend it for kind of legal reasons, I guess. They can only hire you for so long. And I've done all this soul searching once I heard that. And I thought, you know what? Good. Because I have really missed the work that I do that isn't this all day long. <laughs> um, I am a writer myself. I've actually written a couple of books. I'm, you know, very interested in doing more journalistic types of projects. I'm also a playwright. Mm -hmm. I'm about to package a group of 10 to 12, haven't decided, uh, short plays for sale. I am also going to be um, completing uh, uh, both a physical and audiobook of children's poems 
I hope to finish that this year. And as far as plugging, 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 um, I know that I've just been cast in a film that shoots in two weeks. When I can plug that, I will. I guess I can't right now. No worries. So, yeah, so I'm plugging things that aren't quite finished yet, but that's because I have another month on this contract. But man, when that contract is done, look out. I'm going to be... <laughs> Couple of, a couple of things, too, before we close, too, uh, Nancy. Let me just say that uh, because if I ever did uh, uh, took up uh, pursue a career in acting, though, and we did a scene together, you probably the, the one person I go to, like, all the time trying to get advice and trying to pick someone's brain just to understand, like, like to be a real student of the game. Like, I'd be like, uh, Nancy, what would you recommend doing in this uh, scene, though? And uh, mm -hmm. instead of focusing on my character, I'd probably be too busy trying to m make your character look like a million bucks. Oh, that's fun. That's what I would do. Like, if, if I was ever acting, though, I'd try to do any way to enhance the scene. But to make my uh, thespian, to make my uh, co-star look, look like a million dollars is more important to me than what my character would look uh, like. like. You know, I, that's, that's sweet of you. And I can see that in, in your personality. Um, one of the nice things that happens, I think, when you've got good material as an actor... I always feel that the material draws you into it. And as much study as you can do on every scene that you're in, it's going to benefit you a whole lot when you get on stage or in front of the camera, because as I say, it's a whole lot easier when it's well-written, but that action and those words and that silence is gonna help you so so much more I think than you might realize until you're actually in it if you allow it I did a a short uh play we did it on zoom not long ago a few times and someone said how do you cry every time you cry cry I can't do that as an actor and I said because I let the words I'm saying affect me in real life, we don't know what we're going to say next, usually, you know, yeah. unless we're giving a State of the Union address, <laughs> you know, we don't know what we're going to say next. No. And so sometimes when we're saying something, it affects us. And you don't think you're going to cry when you're having a conversation with a friend. Sometimes what you're saying brings you there. Or sometimes it brings you to a funny story. Um, and I think when, again, when you've got decent writing, decent dialogue, you may think you know exactly what you're going to do on that set. But if you allow it to sort of move you, you might find some really wonderful surprises. And I just get this feeling you should be doing some acting because <laughs> you're so curious about it. Uh, if I ever, like, pursued a career in acting, though, I definitely would like ask you for like to be one of my coaches <laughs> okay you got it i definitely you would ask it. you and, but, you got it and i, I do want to say too it like before we conclude that imposture was probably one of the most like one of the most scariest uh one-time monsters i've ever seen yeah. but nancy van eiderstein is probably one of the most good-hearted genuine <laughs> uh multi-talented charismatic Aww. uh woman in the world thank you so much and, you're Right back at you. Not the woman part, but the. <laughs> I just want to say uh, not only thank you for you know doing this interview, but also thank you for those countless memories you gave me watching uh you know watching Lost Galaxy and watching Impostra. And one last thing before we conclude, and that's something you deserve is thank you, Nancy Eiderstein. Thank you, Nancy Eiderstein. Thank you, Nancy Eiderstein. <laughs> oh, Petey, it's such a pleasure. I'm so glad you reached out, and I've had a very, very nice time. Likewise. And I'm, I'm going to also think of some other people you might you might want to interview who I think I, you, you'll really enjoy. Some of these people are just such great people, and I think you'd really have a good time. I'm, I'm going to do a little list. Let me say this too, Nancy, about like, like that. I welcome any actor, voice actor, actress, okay. voice actress, wrestler, you name it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what my show is about. Yeah. I, yeah. But thank you again for coming thank on. Thank you, pleasure. It's been a real pleasure. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank <laughs> you. Bye.